All right, here we go. We are back for another vlog and today we're going to torture the chest a little bit and we're going to get some traps, some shoulders and a little bit of traps into the uh, the whole mix. So uh, I'm going to aim today to go for a little bit on the, uh, the heavier weight. I'm not going to do too much of a fancy stuff. So you got to remember that when I throw in those um, fancy half and fulls or partials with fulls or going down on negatives and things like that, you always have to pick the weight accordingly to be able to do the exercise, and especially if you're doing your workout alone like I am sometimes. I don't have a partner, I don't have a spotter, especially on the chest press, you gotta be careful that when you push, you push to the limit, you're able to go to that limit, but you're also able to go and get there safely. You don't wanna get stuck and have a bar on your throat or have a bar in your chest and crushing you down and yelling for help, nobody coming to save you, and here you are stuck under a bar, what the hell are you gonna do now? <clears throat> So what we're going to try to do today is we're going to keep it nice and classic. We might do a couple of holds here and there depending on the uh, the exercise that we're doing, but we're going to try to go a little bit heavy on weight. So that's why I'm uh, going crazy on uh, some pre-workout over here to get that uh, energy level up after a nice uh, strong day of work and concentration and mental tiredness. But we're definitely going to try tonight and get some uh, veins popping out of that chest. So first off, we're gonna start, we should be starting with the Smith Machine flat bench. I don't have Smith Machines in my uh, basement. I don't need Smith, Smith Machines in my basement. We're gonna go straight with the uh, flat bar bench press. And we're gonna have four sets, ideally eight repetitions. Let's start with the warm up set and then go there from there with weights. just a little bit better here so you can see WTF is going on and first one is just 10 on each side nothing crazy again we need a warm-up we need to make sure we don't pop a shoulder out Okay, all right, all right. That's enough horsing around. Let's try and pack on some of that weight. So we're gonna start straight off the bat. We're gonna keep the tens on, and I'm gonna throw a 45 on each side. Now remember on this one, I'm kind of going away from that uh, whole idea that um, if you're trying to tone and sculpt and things like that, I'm going more towards the building section of things. So I definitely will not recommend this kind of approach to somebody who's just looking for toning out the muscle, uh, just losing weight and things like that because I am going to try to go for as many reps as possible with a very, very heavy weight. So something that I know that I can take but I'm gonna have a hard time maybe by the sixth one or seventh one, okay? The target, excuse me, the target as I mentioned in previous uh, vlogs, uh, you set the target in the beginning. My target is eight. Now, if I get six or seven, uh, my cutoff, I tend to not let myself go below five, okay? So if I miss my goal by about three, but I still have proper form and I was still able to do a full range of motion, I'll take them. That's a good natural fail and I just don't wanna risk another one. At that point, if I could have a spotter to get me off the ground with it, that'd be great. But if I don't, I would rather leave it there. But if I can only do three or if I'm, doing a, if I'm only doing one uh, and I'm not trying to go for one rep max, then you're kind of defeating the purpose here. So you must have a plan. You can't just go onto the bar and hope for the best, see what's gonna happen. So I know I'm doing four sets. I know that each of those sets have to be a maximum of eight reps and a minimum of five. So now I'm going to stack on the weight accordingly. And I know right off the bat from the first one because I'm fresh and everything, I probably will be able to do a little bit more than eight. If that's the case, I'll do them. 
and then pack on a little bit more weight on the second set. But let's feel out the thing, let's see what today has uh, done to my whole energy, my body, my muscle, my mind and muscle connection, and then accordingly adjust from there. So, having all that philosophy under our belt, let's throw a 45 pounder on there. Go. 45 LBS. Boom. Right off the bat, right there. On flat benches. Ah, here we go. wasn't bad at all. That was 12. That was good form. I didn't stop short and that's also my goal too. So now I'm going to pack on some weight. But if I find that I can't go to my chest or I can't get that full range of motion, that means I have too much weight. I'm going to uh, strip down that weight if I need to. So always remember that on chest presses you need to bring that bar Tap the chest and come on up. Tap the chest. You don't rest the bar on your chest and take your time over there, crush your chest, your ribs, your chest muscles. Um, but you tap it and you come up all the way out. Again, don't lock the elbows at the top. Straight, but not locked. So with that in mind, I think, I think that I can handle another 15 aside. So right now, we have a 45 and a 25 each side, that's a 90 plus 50, 140, plus 45 the bar, 185 pounds. Nothing really to write home about, not crazy amount of weights, but I'm trying to go for proper form, full range of motion, and proper flexion of the muscle, okay? So let's see what we get over here. Here we go. a little bit of a break now if you are going for this kind of idea for heavy you are going to need an appropriate amount of rest in between your sets right so you will be going for about two minutes to three minute breaks in between because you always want to let the muscle recuperate and then challenge it again with as much weight as possible now you go for those power lifter guys that leave a lift rather incredible amount of weights so those guys will need their three four Sometimes five minutes, that's a little bit more, depending on how many planes they're trying to pull around. So that kind of strength is, is absolutely impressive, but I'm not going for that body look. I'm not going for that type of idea. So you'll never see me in one of those uh, bench pressing suits, you know, the one that keep you in position to protect shoulders and everything. I'm never gonna end up lifting that heavy. I don't want to lift that heavy. That's not my body goal. Yes, I'm trying to lift heavy to develop muscle, <clears throat> but I'm going from a more bodybuilder physique perspective as opposed to power lifter perspective. So I think another five on each side is gonna do wonders for my third set. Let's see, let's see. Because as per the workout, I only have three chest exercises. After that, we're gonna come into the uh, shoulder slash traps. And uh, in total, we only have three, six, seven exercises, right? So it's, uh, it's not a crazy amount of exercises. So let's really target this chest with what we have. Three simple exercises, but effective ones. Set number three. 
195 pounds in total. Uh, here we go. Uh, one. Uh, two. Uh, three. Uh, four. Uh, what the doctor ordered and that feels good even though with a, a hard uh, thinking day today lots of brain processes lots of everything whoo this feels good get that muscle flowing get those veins popping gotta get this chest a little bit bigger so my food is getting much much uh, more on track so I'm trying to eat more regular and uh, even though with a busy schedule, I'm doing my best to start prepping that food beforehand. I used to do it before. I fell off a little bit because my schedule got really crazy. And uh, I always wanted to kind of take my lunch and get away from everything, the craziness, and just come home and eat. But I found that that's not happening anymore. So now I'm going back to that uh, meal prepping and taking that whole flipping bag with me. And have my small meals throughout the day because I can push all I want in the gym and lift the freaking house up and move it across the street but if I don't have the proper food throughout the day to rebuild the muscle and feed the muscle the nutrition then I might as well not waste my time down here right you need that food in order to repair the muscle when it breaks down so nutrition is very important so when they're saying it's like a 70-30 a type of split I'm pretty much gonna say, you know what, you need to give 100% attention to your nutrition, 100% to your workout. So be careful what you eat, be careful what goes into your body, and then put it to work accordingly when you get your workout in. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, last set on the flat, then we're gonna go on a round of inclines. So we're gonna keep the same weight, 195 pounds. <clears throat> Full range of motion still, we're getting our eight repetitions. Can't go wrong with this damn weight. And I can feel it just enough. The muscle, I have control over it to contract it and stretch at the bottom. <clears throat> Here we go. exactly what you want to do over there so I'm very happy with that the chest is nicely pumped up blood is flowing through we're gonna strip all the way back down to a 10 and a 45 for my first set of incline again I'll take the first set to test the waters a little bit see what I can bang out of it and then increase the weight as I go on. Whew. Good stuff, good stuff. Whew. Here we go. So one thing you got to remember too, and again, if you haven't caught my, uh, my past vlogs, I'm going to explain my way through them. Um, with the incline chest presses, you gotta be careful, especially when you kinda have a rack like I do behind me. And even when you're at the gym when you're with a standalone bench, you gotta position yourself so that when you're under the bar, before you start the exercise, your eyes need to be in line with the bar. Some people, when they have the freedom of moving the bench back and forth, like I have it over here, tend to preset themselves so that the bar is underneath the chest. So in line with the chest. That's where the bar needs to be when you're moving, when you're in the middle of the exercise. 
If I was to position myself like that over here, I'm gonna keep on clanging and banging this bar on the hooks because I'll be in the wrong position. If you're on a Smith machine where the bar is fixed and you can unhook it, that's a different story. So it's an actual Smith machine that yes, you position yourself so that the middle of your chest is right in line with your bar. But when you're on a free weight machine like this one, and the hooks are always gonna be there, the hooks are fixed, not the bar itself, then you have to position your bench so that your eyes are right in line with the bar, and then you pick it up and bring it over your chest. Now, thing number two that you have to watch out with the free bench, and that applies to any kind of free incline bench press, your bar needs to go towards the ceiling. Some people make the, uh, the confusion that when I say keep the bar over your chest, they start going out and at an angle. It's very dangerous to move this bar in any angle as opposed to the straight up. So if you don't go perpendicular to the ceiling, you are risking losing control of that bar and putting it on your stomach, on your thighs and breaking your damn hips. So the bar needs to be over your chest, but it has to go straight to the ceiling. Don't follow mid chest and start losing the trajectory going forward and losing control of the bar. So be very careful on that. I know it sounds like, okay, that's a no brainer, but you'll be surprised how many people make that mistake and follow because they think, oh, I need to stay mid chest, so I need to push it a little bit forward, but then they start losing control of the bar and you twist the shoulder, you sprain the shoulder, you drop the bar, everything in the book can happen at that point. The bar goes straight towards the ceiling. Forget about mid chest, start it right over the top, over the mid top of your chest, but keep it towards the ceiling. So wherever that ends up, forget about it, keep it safe, okay? So let's get the, uh, the first set over here. So I'm adjusting myself to be right in line, eyes on the bar, uh, picking it up. And now I'm in the clear to be able to move this bar up and down. chest presses don't come too close with your bar to your neck because maybe you're not gonna get to the point of the neck maybe you have enough experience in the gym to stay away from your neck but you're gonna come very close to your clavicle your collarbone and if by any means you start getting tired some people when they start to get tired and even bodybuilders sometimes they bounce a little bit off the chest now that's a mistake because it gives you an advantage to lift the bar back up but in some cases they do it and if you're the gym rat that has some experience, but you make that small little mistake there and you start clanging that bar over your collarbone. First, it'll hurt, that's great, not a problem. But if you have enough weight and you lose control and you cry and crack that clavicle, F-U-C-K, that's gonna hurt. Okay, so be careful with those bones. Metal to bone doesn't mix. I'm gonna slap another 10 on this, this little bar here. Set number two. All right, let's do this, come on. Come on. I say that is by the last rep my shoulders and triceps were trying to kick in more than they should be when you're doing a chest press I mentioned this before I'll mention it again your pectoralis major your chest muscle right over here is the main mover the main muscle that you're working and should be working during the exercise 
Your triceps, yes, they're working. Your deltoids, especially the front one, yes, it's working as a secondary muscle. But at the same time, so are your abs, so are your forearms, so is your neck. Your whole body is into it. The main mover though is your pec. If you get to the point where you start feeling your shoulders and your triceps kicking in more than your chest is, then you're in trouble. And this I'm mentioning to people who are more used to feeling the body, knowing the difference. Because there's a difference when your triceps are tired and they're starting to burn during this motion or when they're taking over most of the movement, okay? There's a different kind of pain that is very hard to explain and you can only learn it and know about it through experience. So if you're not sure if your chest is activating, ask somebody, contact, get your, get your trainer from your gym or ask somebody. This is something that needs to be explained. Somebody needs to see your positioning, needs to see your muscle movement and based on that they should judge and say, okay, now it's the proper, excuse me, the proper activation of the muscles. What do you feel now? Register. And then go and go and go and go and go the repetitions till the triceps start burning, put a light weight. And then feel in that position when your chest is still activating to do the movement, but your triceps are burning because they're tired. The lactic acid buildup, right? So you need to know the difference, okay? Safe side is if you're still not sure and you have nobody to ask, if your shoulders push in a little bit forward and you think you focus on the chest moving in everything that's your safest bet to move through and when you're unsure anymore because so many things are burning in your body you don't know what's activating anymore put the weight down reduce the weight a little bit and then try again when you're rested all right so be very careful but for those of you guys who are experienced once you feel that your triceps and your shoulders are kicking in and the work is starting to go away from your chest, you're done. You're not activating that chest proper anymore. Probably because it's tired. Probably because it can't work anymore. If it's giving in and it's doing minimal work, you're done the exercise. Rest and breathe. And if you have to, if that starts early enough, reduce the weight. Okay? Set three. Here we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. set to go one more set to go and that feels good ah. very nice very nice one more set of that we're gonna go into the dumbbell flies now we're gonna have a couple of shoulder presses we're gonna do the whole handsome tonight more seconds to really let that chest breathe a reason why I picked uh, today to be more heavier day as opposed to skills and all that type of day because one of my exercises today is partial lateral raises and I think you guys have seen it in one of my previous logs um, when I've done uh, some shoulders with chest as well it's those ones where you purposely only partially lift now you got to remember that the delt, the deltoid, and more specifically the middle one, will activate the minute you're past five degrees from your central axis, from a fully rested arm. So past the five degree point, approximately here, your deltoid is working and moving your arm. Now, past the 90 degree point, 
Yes, it's still working, but now your upper back, your trapezius is getting engaged as well to come and bring the up over. So generally that's why you won't see only extreme cases when I'm doing some uh, weird shit and some stuff like that is when you'll see me try and go with my lateral raises up and high. Some people do it, has to be lightweight though, all right? You're not even 25 or 35. If you can do easily 30 like this, that's great. Don't try it with so high up because that's a very dangerous point too for your shoulder and it's easier to pull that delt muscle at that point as well. So be very watchful of those. Yes, the possible exercise, but it has to be a very controlled type of environment. Anyways, we're not there yet. We will get to more of that when I'm at that exercise. Let's finish this one. So you get the incline flies and move over to the shoulders and the traps. Last set over here. Here we go. up over there that flip <sighs> too much pumping iron huh ah. all right now remember the beauty about the flies is you're trying to stretch a muscle that has been working towards thickness and again that whole thickness versus stretch of which the one does what I've covered in many of my videos and actually, uh, two vlogs ago, if I'm not mistaken, I posted a pretty good uh, commentary about what does what, so I suggest you guys check it out. Uh, I believe it was vlog 120, 121. So uh, give those at least a read and uh, get a good idea of what's what with the uh, presses versus flies. But we've got three sets over here, 10 reps of flies, Full stretch, I've only got 30 pounders, that's all I need to get a nice full engagement and stretch out of the pectoral. Whew. All right. Ah. Oh, one. can be a good chest workout. Whew. Get some of that O2 in. Whew. Let's go. Set number two. Stretching out that chest. Always start at the top with these ones, never at the bottom. Don't get into that habit. It's much safer to start with an engaged muscle from up here as opposed to the outside where your shoulder's at its weakest. vlog that I posted uh, right before this one actually uh, I speak a little bit about biomechanics of the body so uh, that was one of my uh, my most liked course in university as well learning about the whole hinge and 
where the weight is and the angle and all that stuff. Um, when it comes to the flies, you always want to be careful and have a basic understanding of what's moving from where. It's really basic physics, but you're looking from a mechanical, from a human body mechanical point of view. So when you're doing a chest press versus a fly, you got to remember that the movement of the chest press is folding the arm from the elbow down. So in reality, in both the case of chest press and flies, your main hinge is your shoulder, right? The elbow, we're not gonna worry too much about the details of that right now. So we're just gonna consider that a fixed joint, okay? So for sake of argument and simplicity, we're not gonna worry too much about the elbow. The arm is your lever. And then the entire weight that you have of this thing is right in your fist. That's where the dumbbell sits, that's where most of the weight sits. So when you're doing a fly, the hinge over here is taking on the entire weight, right? Your joint is the hinge. So you got to remember, you know, when you, for example, when you open the, uh, the bolts from your tires on your car, Right? If you just have a small wrench or you try to do it with a screwdriver, you don't have enough torque, right? So that's why when you have a small weight, there's not enough torque or pressure on that hinge on your shoulder to break it or to make it give up. But when you get one of those longer wrenches for your car on a tire and now you start putting weight on one end, then the bolt, however stuck it is, it snaps open. It starts to move now. Same idea, you put 70 pounds right on your fist and you're opening this lever at the hinge. At this point is at its weakest point. So that weight acting on the arm is going to want to fall down. Gravity is pulling it down. So it's a lot of work on the hinge and you have a higher chance of breaking it. Whereas when you're doing a chest press, now that elbow comes into play to make your lever shorter. Again, the elbow doesn't really help in the actual movement of the weight in either cases. In the flies, the elbow is fixed, whereas in the chest press, it's just shortening out your lever. So it's like doing a fly with this, with just your upper arm, your humerus. So the shorter that lever is, the more weight you can put on the hinge. Whereas the longer it is, the more risk you're having of damaging and destroying that hinge. So be very careful on how you work with those two and where you put the weight and how you activate it because you definitely don't want to break that hinge, your shoulder. So keep that in mind the next time you do a chest workout with either chest presses or flies. exercise we're done with the chest essentially we're gonna go shoulders versus or rather shoulder slash traps the first one's going to be your shoulder press now I'm not gonna worry about Smith machines and everything like that like recommended I'm just gonna go straight up dumbbell and the same idea I'm going to use I'm going to go heavy nothing fancy no negatives no nothing like that we're gonna go straight up uh, I have Four sets, 10 reps each. Let's see what we can bang out. We'll try with 50 pounds up first. Goal is 10, nothing less than seven if I absolutely have to stop there, but I'll try not to. <clears throat> Two, three, four, five. Too bad so because it actually felt like I could have done one or two more I'm going to increase to the 60 pounders 
So, set number two. I'm gonna prep on those 60s here. And see what we got. A challenge, boys. A challenge. Set number two. Let's not take too, 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 too long of a break. And get those 60s working. They need some love too. Some action. Let's get that action going. Hup, hup. Uh, up. Two. Three. Four. That's my weight for chest presses or shoulder presses tonight. Here we go. Mm. Mm. A little bit of a rest. Set number three. I always gotta be careful on the shoulders. Again, referring back to old vlogs. I've, uh, I've had many shoulders injuries in the past and the main reason was because my shoulders, my delts, were my weakest link in the chain. I've always hated doing shoulders. Um, I was lucky enough, well, I lucky enough like we all are, that when you train the body like chest and back, you secondarily hit the shoulders as well. So they weren't as behind as they could have been, but uh, my shoulders have been far and far and far behind my, uh, my rest of the body, even my legs, and that, that, that says something when your shoulders fall even behind your legs, in my case anyways, because um, I hate legs. I do them because I have to keep the proportion and everything, but it's my least favorite body part to work on. Now that they're starting to sculpt and get better and better, I'm kind of enjoying them more, but still. Uh, but over this pandemic, my shoulders have really caught up because I've really paid attention to them. So it's very important to hit these stupid, silly, whatever you guys want to call them, exercises like lateral raises, bent over reverse flies, shoulder presses. They're key because you're gonna start building biceps, triceps, chest, and back, and you're gonna have these flat shoulders. Number A, it looks like shit, and number B, you just don't have the strength, you don't have the, uh, the push, the pull. Even though your chest is working, you still need the deltoid support for your shoulders and to complete the movement. You don't have that, you're gonna have a weak bench press, you're gonna have a weak row, a weak deadlift, whatever it is. If your shoulders give up, before any other body part, you're pretty much done and toasted. You gotta stop that exercise. So do be very careful. Um, keeping your body uh, even and balancing all the muscles, working them accordingly and pairing muscle groups together accordingly, switching them to that, it is absolutely key. Aesthetics aside, yes, you're gonna look like shit when something is imbalanced in your body and you have one side bigger than the other or your chest is flat and your back looks huge, muscular and bumpy. All that aside, you're now looking at your health, at your strength, at your, uh, at your body balance, the biomechanics of your bodies. So every muscle has its role in the body. So don't ignore the shoulders, don't ignore the legs, the calves. Uh, when you stretch, for example, the tibias, one of the, uh, or the tibialis anterior to be more specific, is a uh, very overlooked muscle in stretching. And you do a run and you're gonna get a shin splint. And like, WTF is happening, why are my, my shins hurting so much? 
what you do is don't stretch the damn things. You just keep on putting and trust me, it may be a small muscle, but it needs the attention, it needs the work, it needs the stretch. Just like how the shoulders need their own personal attention and work and things to keep things in balance and catch up. So be very watchful for that, guys. <clears throat> Set number three. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> One more set of this, and we're switching up. Whew. That pre workout just wants to come right back out. Um. Here we go. Let's get this over with. Fourth set. to sneeze for about rep number six <laughs> and then I'm like damn it if I sneeze this weights are flying <laughs> okay that was nine that was good fourth set excellent I'm gonna modify the program just a little bit up next I'm gonna keep the heavy laterals but um, the program recommends on a bench lying flat and lifting the laterals up I'm gonna go a little bit lighter on the weight and just do the bend forward raises to the lateral like this because I want to get a little bit of lower back in there as well. So I'm going to use 60 pounders for the partial uh, laterals, <clears throat> just standing up straight. What do I have there? So it says 20 repetitions of that, 12 repetitions of the other one. I'm gonna do 20 on both. The only thing is, on this one, I'm not gonna to go too, too heavy. So what I'm gonna to have to try and do is 12 pounders. So, again, referencing, and I'm gonna keep on referencing the previous vlogs. I'm gonna convince you guys to go and watch some of them if you haven't already. But when you do a free weight, and especially on the shoulder, and you're trying to lift heavy weight, you always got to keep into in consideration your core, your lower back. Your abs have to be tight. Your lower back needs to be able to support the movement. And if in this particular exercise, I'm putting a movement, not to the side, but a little bit side and forward. So that adds even more pressure to the fact that I'm bent over to my lower back. Now I put too much of weight on my arms, and this is a weak position, it's weak for the muscle to move, it's gonna start asking recruitment for the rest of the body. And the recruitment is going to be your lower back, trying to do this to be able to lift the weight up. And that's when the injury in your lower back is going to occur. So for the second exercise that I'm gonna show you guys over here, do not go heavy. I'm going with 12 pounders for 20 repetitions and I'm sensing that that's probably gonna be heavy by the end. But if I don't move my lower back or swim with it, I'm good. If I do, I'm going lighter. Okay, first let's do the partial. Partial lateral raises. Now in this one, you're relatively safe from the point of view because 
you're up straight, right? The only really body part that's at risk in this is your delt, your shoulder joint. So of course, if you're used to doing five or 10 pounds lateral raises like this, and you're trying to bulk up, I will recommend don't go any heavier than 25 pounds, if you even go that, 20 to 25. Now I'm okay to do these ones with 40 to 45 pounds. So 60 is not gonna be a big difference for my delts. They're gonna be able to activate on the partials, no problem, okay? Without causing injury to my shoulder joint. So be very careful, mindful, and know your body very well if you're going to go to this extent. So 20 repetitions, I'm starting with the feet together. Back is straight, dumbbells next to my thighs. One, two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, yeah, four, eight, four, seven, eight, eight, eight. So those ones you'll definitely feel. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And this particular minute. My sugar, my blood sugar has dropped too. So I got a little bit dizzy on that one. That's okay, that's okay. So this one over here, like I'm right in front of the bench, they're always in front of your thighs, okay? So I might have to go a little bit further back here. There we go. So I'm going to bend forth about 45 degrees and one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, ha, ah, fifty, sixty, ah, hey, ah, oh, ah, hey. Pardon the language, but that burns right where it should burn. Reason being is too, you're almost hitting the same muscle, right? <sighs> or I should say you're isolating almost the same muscle because your delts, as I mentioned before, they don't split to work just in the middle, just in the front, just in the back. They will always work together as a whole muscle. The thing is when you lat raises or front raises, you isolate more the front, the middle, or the back. By doing that, with a heavy weight, then you go to your lighter weights too that bend forward, and your muscle already tired, is already pissed off. Now you're doing this light weight with higher repetitions there, and it just wants to kill you. So it's it's a good feeling if in this case your shoulders burn. Gonna get some of that good water. Uh. All right, seven of those lateral raises. right in the freaking core of the fiber damn it all right let's do this one now oh yes again no more than 45 not to be confused with this movement that's coming up next as my last exercise I'm going right now lateral into the front two Three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, uh, 60, 70, 80. Mm. Mm. Okay, 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 that hurts. seconds one more set on each of these we're gonna get the reverse flies out of this and we'll call it a workout Whew. now remember with these types of exercises that we do the reason why it's considered chest slash shoulder slash traps obviously we've done chest right pretty clear that we've done shoulders right the traps kind of remain questionable. How is it traps? We didn't really do anything directly towards traps. Well, we do. Uh, the shoulder press obviously a shoulder only exercise. These two over here that I'm doing right now, lateral raises with this front weird. So just as a side idea, this is a nine degree. It'll turn into a rear delt, right? A reverse trap slash rear delt. If you were to go fully up front, that will be a lot of front delts over there. It'll be similar to doing this. But what I am doing is up in here, right? So can you guys tell the angle of this? When I'm doing that, I'm activating mainly front and lateral deltoids, anterior and uh, mid deltoids, very minimal on the, de on the rear, on the posterior. But this also activates the traps, okay? So, the lateral heavy partial lateral raise that we do because it's so heavy the traps activate in to be able to support and help with the lift so in some cases see this is where bodybuilding fitness and and training working out becomes very confusing because in some cases it's okay to cheat and activate muscles that you're not trying to activate during the movement or the movement's not intended to activate those muscles then there's certain movements that you do with your body, uh, like going up on your toes when you're trying to lift something, like even on a lateral raise, if it's not getting too heavy for me, I go a little bit up on the toes and that gives that extra little bit of pump up, that momentum, that oomph, to be able to lift the weight up. So in some cases, and to a certain extent, cheating is okay, but it's not okay to do it to the point where I'm doing this, for lateral raises and it's like I'm trying to learn how to fly or something, uh, that's unacceptable for any level. Bodybuilder, non-bodybuilder, novice, expert, doesn't matter. You can't do that shit. But some extent of cheating, cheating is okay and that's when you need that specialty, that understanding of when too much cheating is dangerous for you. When, what is the point when there's too much cheating? Am I cheating by moving my thumb in and out? Am I cheating by swinging like a tree in the middle of a winter, winter thunderstorm? Uh, wh where is it? So this is where your experience in a gym comes in. This is where your personal trainer, your coach, your instructor comes in to be able to recognize when cheating is bad and uh, damaging, detrimental, and when it's actually good, it's productive, it's constructive, it helps your movement. It gets the other muscles that are not intended but are safe to be added to the exercise is needed. So you gotta have a good trained eye for that to be able to catch it. Last set, 60 pounders lateral raises, boom, 20 reps. <clears throat> Two, uh, four, five, that one. Good thing. 
no fingers were there. That would have hurt. All right, let's get this one over with. Oh, I don't want to. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, ah, seventeen, eight, mm. Mm. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. One more exercise. Is better than water in these cases. Alright, start off with 30 pounders, 15 repetitions. Let's see if we can bang back. Back full reverse flies. For this one, we're gonna have them palms facing each other so the dumbbells won't be like this, they'll be like this. Two. Feels good. Pardon me. Oh man. The chest really feels it. The shoulders feel it nicely. The traps, they're activated. It's nothing like doing some heavy shrugs or rack pulls or things like that, but they're definitely getting activated. They're doing the work, they're being isolated. So I feel them. Set number two. One more set. Oh man, look at that. I'm at exactly 58 minutes. I got two more minutes to finish this workout and call it on an hour. So let's bang it out, come on. Drag everything we have out of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Whoa. Right. Mm. There we go. 58, 32 minutes. Or 58 minutes, 32 seconds. That was a good freaking workout. So thank you everybody for joining me again. This was a more of an explanatory vlog. So I went through a workout. I took you guys step by step. Showed you again a little bit of a different style. That's why I'm here every single time give you ideas of styles and kind of guide you and help your workouts if they hit a plateau to break that plateau and then keep on moving through. So thank you all very much for watching this video, this vlog. If you enjoy it, please don't forget to give me a like, subscribe, hit that bell button. I post regularly. I also post some explanatory videos, some uh, uh, quiet videos just to show you exactly how to do a movement. So very descriptive of each exercise. Also want to let you guys quickly know that in a couple of weeks, my app, Strong Dragon Training app, is going to be launched. You'll be able to follow workouts over there. Trainers, you'll be able to download that workout and use it for your clients. Upload your own workouts, link them to YouTube videos, create plans, create uh, 
everything for your clients and just have virtual conversation. Everything's gonna be an amazing app. I don't wanna ruin it for you guys. I will unveil it soon, a couple of more weeks and it's gonna be done and ready. Thank you all for watching Strong Dragon Training Vlogs. Follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I'll catch you guys on my next video. Stay fit, stay healthy.